Grammy and Screen Actors Guild nominee and a Hollywood Walk of Fame star recipient. A beloved performer all over the world who has joined us because he kind of grew up with the Beatles himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, I'll do my best to make it so. Thank you. <laughs> um, but before I do that, I might make it much worse because I have to tell you, given where we are and what we are celebrating, that actually of those um, nominations that you mentioned, one of them wasn't just a nomination, it was an award. Woo! And uh, guess which one it was for? Achievements that continues to inspire and delight and amuse and entertain people all around the world, here, there, and everywhere. The importance of the Beatles' music cannot be overstated. The Beatles' timeless songs are cherished everywhere. They lift spirits and they connect humanity and empathy and understanding. Well, one Beatle certainly lifted my spirits, and this was, at that time, my first encounter with a Beatle. And it's, a, for me, an illustration, not of somebody I happened to meet, but of the kindness and generosity of that person. When I was uh, 24 in 1964, I was an actor working in regional theater. I think my salary was 18 pounds a week, you know, $23, something like that. And um, I drove a, Ford, a 1938 Ford Popular. In the company, there was a beautiful and talented young woman called Jane Asher. But the one thing we all knew about Jane was that she was Paul McCartney's girlfriend. And one Saturday night, the word went around backstage, Paul's out front, Paul's out front, you come and see the show. <laughs> well, I don't know what kind of show we gave that night, but I think every one of us were just dedicating that evening to Paul McCartney. Well, it happened that a few days earlier, we'd been sitting around, drinking a cup of coffee, the company, including Jane and myself, and we've been playing that game. If somebody gave you a million pounds, where would you go on holiday? What soup would you buy? What kind of whiskey would you drink? And one of the questions was, what car would you drive? Well, there was only one car that I was really passionate about in those days, and it was the Aston Martin DB4. As far removed from what I drove on a daily basis, as any car could possibly be. Uh, and so I made that very clear, that's what I love. After the performance on the Saturday night, in my underwear, standing alone in my dressing room, there was a, a knock at the door. And I said, yeah, yeah, come on in, because it was all very relaxed in those days. And the door opened, and standing in the frame of the door was Paul McCartney, who said, Jane tells me you like Aston Martins. Yeah, drive this. And he tossed a set of keys across the room to me. Well, I did drive it. In fact, I drove Paul and Jane, who sat in the back, all scrunched up. And, and uh, we drove from Bristol to Bath and back. And all the way, Paul kept saying, come on, put your foot down. Overtake, overtake. And all I could think was, if I kill Paul McCartney, <laughs> that will be 
the Patrick Stewart legend for the rest of time. A delightful, charming, generous human being. The music of the Beatles transcends all barriers, flying high above borders and walls to unite and uplift us. And I'd like to share a few lines from the Beatles' Abbey Road album to illustrate what I mean. And here from John Lennon's beautiful song, Because. Love is old. Love is new. Love is all. Love is you. And from George's gorgeous, soothing song, Here Comes the Sun. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. Maybe my favorite lyric of any of the Beatles' lyrics. And Paul McCartney's universal words of wisdom from the end, which also happens to be the only Beatles song on which Ringo had a drum solo. And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Well, I think that all sums it up quite nicely. The Beatles are for everyone, everywhere, forever. So, why don't we do it in the road? <laughs> and take some photos of this lovely Abbey Road zebra crossing here on Vine Street. Thank you.